All right. It's time to review an early review. And this is going to be non-spoiler because I want you to experience three body problem the way I did. I know nothing. It is a series of novels uh, by a Chinese author. It is about a global, a global cataclysm that occurs that unites scientists all towards a common goal. I'll speak as much about it as I, as I can without giving spoilers. I'll just say this. Um, the first few episodes are a little slow. You're introduced to a group of characters that peripherally know each other from the world of science. You meet Jess Hong. You, you, well, excuse me. You meet Jin Cheng played by Jess Hong. You meet Jack Rooney played by John Bradley. Uh, you meet, uh, Augie Salazar, played by Elsa Gonzalez, and something mysterious is happening. You also meet a character named Will Downing, played by Alex Sharp, who was in the movie How to Talk to Girls at Parties, which is a film I uh, really love. And uh, John Bradley, uh, uh, oddly, was in Game of Thrones. He plays a scientist named Jack Rooney. They're all scientists, and something is happening with scientists around the world. They're being murdered, or they're committing suicide. And each of them has been oddly infected with a series of numbers that flash before their eyes. This is all in the trailer. And the numbers is a countdown, presumably to their death. Why is this happening? Why is it only affecting scientists working in innovative fields, mostly in areas that involve a breakthrough research into things that will advance humanity? Um, and through this series of characters, because it's a very global film, they all come together to solve this problem. The opening, the very first minutes of the first episode, takes place in the 1960s during the Cultural Revolution in China, where a young woman witnesses her father being beaten mercilessly by revolutionaries who are getting rid of everything, which includes science. This bitterness towards the death of her father will inform why this character makes certain choices. And what you discover is that the Chinese that, that like all over the world, the Russians, the Americans and the Chinese have built giant communication devices to talk to any civilization out there who will listen. And interestingly, Someone talks back. This sets off all the all of these events that take place in the 60s because it does do a little cutting back and forth between present day and the 60s story, which is very important. Someone from out there in the universe responds. Then, so we're bouncing back between present day and the story in the 60s in China about an alien civilization that reaches out. What do they want? Um, I, I am not going to reveal what they want or what the meaning of the term three body problem is. It is all revealed in episode three. I'm going to say that the first two episodes are a little slow. It's a lot of setting the table with characters and some characters are likable. Some are a little cringe. I'll say this. Um, the, the, by, by, but by episode three, when you get to episode three, I was hooked and I finished watching the whole thing. I've seen all eight episodes and I plan to rewatch it before we do a full review, which will include you, Alan, because I yeah. really want you to see this. I really want to see it. It is. I really loved the show lost. I thought lost mm -hmm. was great. The problem with lost um, is this is the final uh, season. <laughs> the, the, well, not just the final season, the fact that it meandered yeah. and there was so much, mystery box right there was look at this mystery box and look at that mystery box and look at this mystery box and and nothing would be resolved nothing in the show would ever reach a place of like explaining what the what did the numbers mean what did this mean what was the no, it, none of it mattered it felt like at the end of the day nothing mattered the great thing about this show is there are a lot of mysteries and mystery boxes opened and they all pay off 
and you get answers to all the questions. It's literally the show is the show that Lost wanted to be and couldn't be because of the writing. It was based on a book though, right? It's based on a series of novels. Yeah. Season one is more than likely, and and now I want to read the books. Season one has to be, I'm going to guess the first book because it, it doesn't necessarily, I'm not going to say it ends on a cliffhanger, but there's more to the story. Nothing. It's not all resolved in season one. Let's just say that it's setting the table, but when you get to episode three and you understand what is happening, incredible. Hmm. So it, it, it's, it's just like, this is what's happening. And then there are more mysteries, more mysteries, more things that reveal themselves. There are challenges where you get to the final episode, like how is humanity going to survive the consequences of an alien civilization who knows of earth's existence? How will the world respond? And you will see this show. The first two episodes I got to say are kind of a slow burn. And there are unfortunately some cringe moments while it's a global cast and a very diverse cast in a good way, there is this sort of annoying girl boss moment in the first episode involving the character of Augie Salazar. I think she's the weakest character in the whole show. She is a girl boss, scientist, smarter than everybody, incredibly arrogant, as beautiful as a supermodel, lesbian, not a fan of, uh, there's like a scene where overtly she kind of brushes off this white dude who's at play karaoke, just trying to make conversation and he's made to look a fool. I get it, but it's like, I'm just, I'm rolling my eyes at that, but I'll say that the movie or the, excuse me, the show is not overtly woke. There's just sort of has it sort of cringe moments here and there, which is like, ugh, you kind of expect, but more than 80 to 90% of it isn't that right. But so if you can just like set that aside, I will say this, the opening scene from the very first episode about the cultural revolution in China is unbelievable. All these young people beating this scientist senseless mm -hmm. and the witnessing of that and the language that's used, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the culture war happening now and a lot of what is happening. We are not very many steps on college campuses from real life horrors like what happened in China during the Cultural Revolution. I believe that that opening scene, though it was written, the novel was written 15 years ago. So, and it's all, all of those events, the culture war was not a, uh, in full effect back then. It was maybe seeds of it, but it's more meaningful now. And I believe that opening scene of the show is a comment on today. It's 100% a comment on today. Um, uh, so, you know, um, I really love the first season. I'm dying to see what happens in uh, up. I mean, like I just need to see where the story goes. Um, I have to say they did a very good job. Benioff and Weiss, when they have a roadmap, like a novel, I actually think they're pretty good producers and it's very much deals in the realm of serious science fiction. This is serious science fiction uh, with likable characters and shocking turns of events. I'm being very vague mm -hmm. for a reason because I do not want to ruin things. One thing you can see in clips and in the trailer, these this other civilization finds a way to gift these helmets that bring one into a video game world that is so real because how these this other civilization is trying to explain to humans their the problem that they have and um they 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 present it in the form of a video game so that humans can understand their dilemma it's so well done it's and um those video game scenes are really important so pay attention to what's happening. It's about, it's, it's, it's the way that they're explaining their civilization's dilemma. I can't wait for the next season. Um, 
I'm not going to say a lot of my problems with the show are nitpicks. If I get into the nitpicks, we're going to get into spoilers. Yeah. Alan, please watch the show. Yeah, I'll have to do it this weekend. Uh, we will do, have access. Yeah, we will do a full review once Alan has seen it, and we will talk spoilers, but I would like to wait until... Um, I think the show comes out in like two weeks. Yeah, the first episode premiered at South by Southwest. I, I ran into uh, three people who were real big fans of the book, so they were interested in seeing it. Um, well, I, I've only spoken to one other person who's seen it. We could not stop talking about it. Wow. We could not stop talking about it. It was because, I, first of all, look, just because something has spaceships and laser guns doesn't make it science fiction. This is science fiction that talks about things that we actually may have to deal with in the future, whether it be the challenges of science, the um, also the consequences of certain decisions that people make when it comes to science. Um, even Oppenheimer is referenced by one of the scientists. And what's, I don't feel that this show is talking down to people. It's not dumb, right? I mean, sometimes science fiction... Can, and look, I love a good dumb sci-fi. I love a good, like, you know... I, 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 I'm I cool with, like, just make it a simple monster movie. I'm okay with all of that. But I want a good, smart sci-fi. I really want to read the novels now because I want to see what happens, um, you know, with the story. It sets out this incredible... I mean, there's so many incredible and interesting ideas that are presented and real science in it. Like most everyone in the show is like a physicist in this and about the evolution of science, how scientists have also been used by governments to um, move, to uh, move forward certain agendas. I just really, really loved it. I can't wait to watch it through again. And um, the only thing I can compare it to, it's like lost because of the, mystery constant mystery boxes that are revealed and paid off instead of not and the global cast and the sort of world there's even a one of the actors from lost is actually in the show in a the big Asian one <laughs> um no it's actually well maybe there's another one um liam cunningham is the actor he plays a character named thomas wade who's um it, it, they don't even really say who he is he just knows everything He's like an industrialist with, you know, he's got endless amounts of money to be able to try to fix things. And now you've, seen, you've seen the whole thing. I've seen the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Let's just say this. Uh, not everybody makes it. <laughs> well. Not everybody makes it. So be careful what characters you start to love. Yeah. Not everybody makes it. And it's yeah. so, so don't, don't love the white guys. Uh <laughs> why'd you have to put it that way but Lee, Lee, <laughs> Lee Cunningham he was in um, he was in Lost he was also in um, he was in Game of Thrones Just the cast is great mm -hmm. I mean whatever you say about Benioff and Weiss man they're good at casting they're good at casting so yeah um, Liam Cunningham was I mean, why am I spacing on it's because I haven't seen Game of Thrones in so long um but yeah, I always really liked him. So yeah, you got to go back a while for his career. So wait, he was in Lost, right? Am I wrong? Why did I? I've not. The name sounds the does not ring a bell. You're, you you'll recognize him. Yeah, you'll recognize him. So yeah, but he was in Game of Thrones. Well, he's a white so. guy, so he'll die. Um, Stop maybe. it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything to you. I'm not talking to you. I so just want to be able to be Penny's father or sorry, what he might have been Penny's father. That's what he wanted. That's it, be. Penny's father. Okay, yeah. Um, but he was also in Game of Thrones. In any case, um, can't wait to talk to you about it more. This is my early review. I'm very enthusiastic, cannot wait to see where it goes. Right. I haven't felt this way about a show this year at all where I just need to see like it was, you know, it's like how certain Netflix shows are like potato chips. You're like, but I have to see what happens next. The first couple episodes had me a little concerned. And then when, when I got to episode three, wow. 
Yeah, so, that's kind of how uh, I felt about One Piece. I, I couldn't get past the second episode, and but everyone's telling me right. you need to get past the second episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, in any case, uh, looking forward to talking to you about it, Alan. And okay. I recommend it at least. Good. You know what? Get through episode three. If you can't, you got to get through episode three okay. before you can really make a judgment. Doc Savage, the trailer I saw gave me the impression that it's pretentious and borders on political ideology. I hope I'm wrong. Um, politics is a part of it in a way that like the scientists are kind of in the midst of global politics. Right, um, but would that never happen in real life, really? No, but it's like no, but that's what I'm saying. It's it's done in a very smart way, yeah. And I like it reminds me the thing about Lost. Let me say something about Lost. Lost was a huge hit. Lost was a huge hit, and no, and this is before anyone ever used the word diversity, because Lost was organically diverse. Why? They were all a bunch of people on a flight and they didn't know each other and they weren't friends before that flight, that flight crashed. Suddenly a bunch of people from all over the world with all different professions, different levels, different places in their lives all come together. It was organically diverse. And I don't remember when lost was on anyone ever talking or using the words diverse. The one thing I do know, I went to some panel at the WGA and they were talking about um, demographics saying that the reason a lot of TV shows either succeeded or failed is because they were underrepresenting people in the uh, Nielsen ratings. So what they did was they started to actually give boxes to a more diverse group of Americans, knowing that like X percent of Americans are this type and whatever. And when they did that, it's like, Oh, we should probably just, make more shows that have like uh, include more people. I'm not saying that that's, but they didn't do that previous to like, you know, I don't know, mm -hmm. like 2005 ish. Right. Like that's when they started like being just doing a better sampling of people that watch television. So things changed, uh, but it yeah. was organic. It was well, like, it, yeah, it was, it was, respond it was, it was let, let me finish. organically. It, it was or responding to the marketplace. Like Asians, by laundry detergent too. Yeah, Calgon. As Calgon, whatever. People buy products. Everyone buys products. Fine. But Lost was a huge hit with advertisers because of that. And I went to a whole panel at the WGA talking about this stuff. But it was done not in a way of like any sort of DEI or wokeness. It was just like, hey, you can make money. <laughs> That's the, the whole thing was like, hey, just make money. And so... um. Doc Savage, check it out. I really want to hear what the chat thinks yeah. about it. Well, Andy, I was just gonna say it's the difference between doing it organically versus forcing it. Uh, and yeah. then and now you have rules on how you portray diverse people, uh, people of color, which which well, is yeah, you know, which we've been covering. So yeah, right, or forcing it in everything mm -hmm. when it doesn't need to be there. Yeah, you know, and then like lecturing you can do a show like, about white you can do a show like Shogun, and mm -hmm. uh someone wrote a dumb article. Um, the lack of black yeah. characters in Shogun. It's like, well, they weren't there. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I know. Well, um, revenge. There weren't a lot of Asians in Roots, so 